how I get it all done. That's the top question people ask here and in my personal life. So today I'm revealing my top six secrets plus bonus tips. I share a lot about this in my videos actually. It is no secret, but I don't have a video specifically about how I get things done and as much done as I do get done. Okay, briefly, for those that are new here, you're probably wondering, <laughs> get all what done? So give me a second to tell you just a little bit about me. We have a bigger family of eight. I homeschool, I run the home and the homestead. We have a small farm and we grow a lot of our own foods in our quite large garden. I can and preserve these foods and cook from scratch. I also have a part-time job. My days run about 14 to 17 hours, so those are all important details for you to know. I do not have any small babies right now, so I'll tell you what I did when I did have small babies around. I'm going to save that for the end though. I'm also going to save a very important detail and message at the end that you really need to hear. If you're in a place of life where you're just feeling like you're not getting all of the things done that you would like to get done or need to get done. I have a very special message for you. So be sure to stick through the end for that. The number one tip that I have for you is to take care of your body. Take your vitamins. Eat at least a couple good meals a day. People overlook this constantly. If you don't feel well, you're not going to be able to get as much done. You're not going to be able to think as clearly. If you do have health issues, make sure you find a functional healthcare practitioner that can truly help you through them. The second tip that I have is similar to the first. If you're depleted and out of energy, also could be because you're not getting enough rest. So I just bought one of those fancy watches. It was only $30 actually. They go from like $30 to $400 I hear. I got the cheaper one and wear it a few nights a week. You don't have to wear it all the time. It monitored my sleep though. And wow, that was insightful. I realized on the days that I was feeling the worst and performing the poorest, those were the same days that I I had gotten poor sleep the night before and didn't even realize it. I had no idea. I'll link to my particular watch below. It actually tells you, you might want to take a nap today, which I seldom do, but <laughs> at least I know that I probably should. <laughs> and it does help me to cut myself a little bit of slack and say, well, maybe there's a couple high energy jobs that I probably shouldn't tackle today. Maybe I better move those to tomorrow because I don't want to mess them up, but also taking a rest day. So I believe in taking a rest day like the Bible tells us to do. When I do this, I find it makes me 20 times more productive for the week ahead. So try to get a day where you can get some rest in. All right, tip number three. When I am feeling like there's just way too much going on and I cannot think, you know those times where there's just so much to do that you're overwhelmed and your brain is just not working very well because it doesn't know what to tackle first. Well, here's my tip for that. Get it out of your head. Start making a list of all of these things that are bogging you down that need to get done. You can use a highlighter or make a star by the priorities. One of our priorities right now is getting firewood in before the cold hits. Another priority is garden harvest but school lessons are also a big priority. I've got high schoolers. That is a big undertaking. I'm also teaching my youngest how to read. Not terribly time consuming, but it definitely does take time each and every day. Food is always a priority because <laughs> people need to eat. Essentially, by having a list where the priorities are written and the to-dos are written, this means anybody in the house that is old enough can actually pitch in a little bit. As you are making this list, make sure you keep track of things that are priorities to do now and things that can be done anytime. So you'll have your do now and your do later list. One really smart woman I knew had all of her to-do later things on sticky notes so that she could move them to the next week if she didn't get to them this week. On that same note, moving on to the next tip. This is a big one for me. It is probably one of the biggest ways that I get as much done. Pay attention to your optimal brain energy hours. When are the parts of the day where your brain is functioning optimally? I think everybody has certain times of the day, every day where they just think better. I have learned that my most productive, my best hours are before 12 in the morning. So I hit those hours hard. 
I pack as much as I can in to those hours, especially the projects that require the most brain energy. So if I can get it done before noon, I can get way more done. I find that the activities that take more physical activity are best safe for the afternoon. Paying attention to your body and what works best when. So I think we all kind of have a rhythm or a pattern built into our systems like that. But for us women, it goes a step further. We need to pay attention to our cycle rhythms too. Did you know there are certain weeks your brain works better for different things based on your cycle? I highly suggest the MyFlow app where you can learn a lot more about this. And I found that paying attention to it and honoring my body in this area makes me a lot more productive. Next tip, when the kids were little, I did everything myself. I will be talking more about that in a moment and tips for if all you have are small children and babies. But now that I've got children that are older, adult, teenagers, and older children, I do not do it all myself. I've been teaching my children how to cook. I've been teaching them how to garden. I've been teaching them life skills. I've been teaching them to do their own laundry as soon as they are old enough to safely be able to do that. <laughs> you can look up age appropriate chores. So as Essentially, I don't get it all done. I, I do have help and my kids definitely pull their load. So in our home, most of the kids like to make their own breakfast. I taught them how and they like to make what they want, except for the youngest ones, of course. So that takes something off my plate. Teenagers and my oldest son will make dinners sometimes. Now I do help out with this if they need it, but most of the time they do not need it because I have been teaching them how to cook for quite some time. When it comes to the homestead, well, <laughs> the reason I got the homestead was for the kids for the most part. <laughs> so each one of the kids has their own animal. They take care of their own animal. My daughter has a bunny. One of my boys has ducks. One of my teenage sons doesn't have any animals yet, but he helps get the goats out in the morning and puts them away in the evening for me. One of the goats belongs to my oldest daughter, so she helps out with milking once a day. So when it comes to the homesteading, it's not all on me. A major secret in how I get as much done as I do get done though, is by having a planner that works for me. It took me years to get a planner that truly met my needs. In fact, I had to work with a designer to make it myself. I wanna to talk to you about undated planners because I know a lot of people say that they don't know how to utilize a planner as a stay-at-home mom or homemaker. This is where undated planners, I feel like, come into play. Throughout my homemaking journey, there will be weeks when I'm better about planning and weeks when I'm not. And I just really can't stand it when there's a whole section of the planner or sometimes like a whole month where I didn't really get to sit down and do very much goal setting or planning. Sometimes I'm able to get a lot done just by, you know, going by the seat of my pants. But generally speaking, I get a lot more done when I have some set goals that have been written down. And always, <laughs> I feel better and more organized when I have written down and gotten everything out of my head that is bogging me down or that is just overwhelming. This is a planner that I worked with a designer to create. It's actually got a section called a brain dump section <laughs> where you can just get everything out of your head that keeps flying through your mind. Everything that you're constantly going, oh, I need to do that, I need to do that, I need to do that. Just, I've got a spot where you can just write it, like a running list. You can take that paper out and you can put it on the next month if you didn't get it all done that previous month. My planner has all kinds of customizable little sections that you can use however you want. You do have to write the dates in. And the reason that I did that is so that you wouldn't have weeks and weeks where there's a date written in and you forgot to do any planning or you didn't have time to do planning or you just simply didn't plan for that week. You can just reuse those pages. They don't go bad. They don't expire like a dated planner does. If you're having trouble getting organized and getting your whole family on the same page, I highly suggest getting a little, just a home management binder. This is a little A5 size, I think we call it. You can do a big one. I prefer that, but these are really pretty. They're not unattractive to have laying around the house and they were affordable very affordable I will link to them below but what I like to do is I like to have a daily cleaning list here I have an upstairs cleaning and a downstairs cleaning because we have an upstairs and a downstairs but basically essentially the point is make a list of all of the house cleaning activities that need to be done on 
whatever basis you like to do them, whether it's weekly or monthly, have the running checklist in here in a binder where the whole family can go and get it. So once I started this, we started getting the upper and the lower floors of our home cleaned in a couple hours before it used to take half the day because people would be like, well, you know, I don't really know what to do. You would think after the family as a whole group <laughs> cleaning the house um, for, you know, like six, five, six years together, eventually they would get it, but they don't. So, okay. So that's where this comes into play. Once I did this and I wrote down all the things that need to be done on the top floor, all the things that need to be done on the bottom floor, kids, everybody just tackles this. They come get it. They pick whatever they want to do from the list and they go do it. And we get done in like two hours and then they have the rest of the weekend. Cause we started doing this on Saturday. So then they have the rest of the weekend or the day for free time and fun time. This helps me to feel just a whole lot less frazzled and more like the things that, that need to be done are done and they were done with way less chaos and a lot more peace. This is my little binder, I guess holder you could call it, this thing right here. And in this, I keep my kids' homeschool planner. So they just pull this out whenever they need to know what they're supposed to be doing at school. And that's, that's this planner. I have one of these for my work. I have this main one and it is everything homemaking, farm related, home setting related, and just daily planner related. I found it works best for me to have the homemaking, the homesteading, the farming, all of that in one and the homeschool stuff separate. And then my work stuff mainly separate. But if it wasn't for these planners and, you know, utilizing these planners, I would probably be maybe quarter as productive as I am because I would never know, you know, if I'm coming or going or <laughs> what's up from. I told you I was gonna have a special message and I was gonna talk to those of you that have small babies too. So first of all, I want to address this. I started learning homemaking and I started learning homesteading practices as a teenager. My parents were into this lifestyle. My stepdad started teaching me how to care for chickens and butcher chickens even, starting at around age 10. I went hunting with my biological dad when I was around 15 and we got a deer. My mom started teaching me to can at age 15. By 15, I was able to manage the home. The only thing she wouldn't let me do is a laundry. She was positive I would mess it up and she was probably right. <laughs> my point in telling you this is I didn't learn how to do all of these things all at once. The skills that I've learned, I've learned over many, many years, over 30 to be exact. So I didn't learn all of this at once. Some of you all are trying to to start from nothing. You're trying to learn all of these things all at once and it is <laughs> actually not <laughs> mentally healthy to do that. <laughs> so give yourself grace, give yourself time. Baby steps can go a long way in the end. So one skill at a time. And speaking of babies, when I had only all little babies and was having babies, the gardens and the homesteading were not possible for me to keep up with. So I had to let those go for a few years and I chose to let those go because there were other factors that made homesteading extremely difficult and I've talked about that in other videos. So the way I managed all of the things when I had only little babies and small children and just children under 10 was one day, it was probably over 10 years ago that I did this. I sat down, I made a list of every activity that I had going on, and then I started paying attention to how long that activity took to do each day. I actually already had a pretty good idea, so I just attached a time to some of the things, but a couple of them I did have to figure out how long they took. I realized I was trying to fit 24 hours of activities into 12 hours. That is one of the things that made me go, okay, we need to get rid of some things here. So I narrowed down only the priorities. And for me at that time, it was homeschooling, homemaking for my family and children. So cooking and taking care of the home, taking care of the babies that were coming along. I factored in time for parenting. And lastly, work. I was working. So make yourself the list of all of the things that you would like to do or are trying to do or need to do. Figure out how long it's taking to do each of those things and figure out where you need to go from there. Children, they don't keep. They grow up. They move on. They move out. They're a priority because you only have so much time. Something that helps to keep me on track and something that motivates and excites me and gives me zeal to keep doing what I do is remembering 
my values, remembering what is important to me in life. I am a Christian. As a Christian, we have an example of what our days and our weeks should look like in the Bible. And it's the Proverbs 31 woman who was industrious. Instead of always spending money, she was actually making it as well. And we also have Titus 2. I think the Proverbs 31 woman is a perfect example for women with children that are getting older. Titus 2 is for women that have only little children. And I could be wrong, but that's the way that I I have read and understood this. So in Titus 2, 4 through 5, we read that the older women are to urge the younger women to love their husbands and children and to be keepers at home. So I take that to mean we're supposed to be training the younger children, caring for them, and that takes so much time. But remembering that that is a priority is helpful. And by following that principle, I do not believe we will be led astray. <laughs> as they learn good habits and as they grow, not only will we find time for other things, but we will be able to smile with joy because we have raised humans that are strong and capable, bright and knowledgeable, that know how to take on whatever it is they want to take on. So the point is to wrap all of that up. What are your priorities in life? What is the most important thing to you? Because all of the other things happening should be supporting factors to that. So what is your vision for what you want? If you're really clear on that, your priorities will align to that and you will be able to get more done because you will have a clearer direction.